Hello, my name is Frank Tynan and you're welcome to Studio 10. We are broadcasting from the Twilight European Network here at the Twilight Community Centre in Kilkenny. On today's programme, I speak with the Ambassador to Ireland from Morocco, who visited Kilkenny earlier in the year. Joining me on the programme also today are Selina Grace from the Kilkenny Volunteer Centre and John Hurley, CEO of Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce. Our musical feature today comes from the Kilkenny's. I do hope you enjoy the programme and let's welcome our first guest. I'm delighted now to welcome to Studio 10 at the Twilight Community Group Centre here in the heart of Kilkenny, John Hurley, who is the CEO of Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce. John, welcome to the programme. Many thanks for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me along, Frank. Delighted to be here. It's a pleasure. Um, there's lots we can talk about, but I was thinking maybe because we're a new kind of channel and um, we could be seen all over Europe, that maybe just for viewers who are watching in, just maybe I could ask you about your own role as CEO of the Chamber, um, John, and the services that you provide for your members here in Kilkenny. Right, well, we're a Chamber of Commerce like any other Chamber of Commerce right across the globe. Um, Kilkenny Chamber, is, we're fortunate in that uh, we're here well established since 1948. Uh, and my role as CEO, Chief Executive, is uh, a full-time role. Uh, I am engaged full-time in this um, endeavour by the, the Chamber of Commerce. So that gives me the opportunity to be focused really on what the Chamber uh, is there to do. And essentially what the Chamber is there for uh, is a supportive and representative organisation for businesses in Kilkenny City and County. So in today's modern world, to be good at your business and successful at it, you really need to be focused on what your core thing in business is. You don't have time to be chasing after politicians and other decision makers and so on. Um, that's what the Chamber of Commerce does for you while you're running your business. Excellent. And as you mentioned there, 70 years uh, in service here in Kilkenny, and we have seen so many changes, but certainly the last two years, John, alone with COVID and Brexit, I mean, have really posed so many challenges, I'm sure, for your members. But there's great resilience. Yes. Yes, absolutely. And that, I think, is the thing that has struck us most in the Chamber of Commerce as we deal with our members uh, and the wider business community is the resilience that has been shown uh, by people in business and by the businesses themselves in terms of how they've managed to adapt um, and adjust and change and in, uh, indeed identify opportunities in the extremely turbulent and changing times that we've been through in the last few years. Uh, as you said, you've mentioned a few um, very distinct and big deals that have happened you know Brexit was a big deal uh, and and uh, Covid was a big deal and just when we get through one another seems to come along and currently we're you know uh, as part of Europe uh, grappling with the challenges of that awful situation in uh, Ukraine at the moment. Yes, I mean, it's, it's, just, it's, it's such a, a, a tragedy what's happening in Ukraine and, um, and again also with the COVID. But I suppose in relation to the COVID, we're gradually getting there. Um, but I think, again, local support for local business was very evident, John, during that two years in particular, wasn't it? Very much so. I mean, it, be much so. I mean, it became uh, very clear very early on uh, that we're facing significant challenges and we needed to do everything we could uh, to support each other, um, both as, as businesses and in our communities, uh, to get through uh, the challenges that were there because this was uncharted waters and there was no kind of plan, here's what you do when a COVID pandemic hits. There was no such plan. Um, so the focus became very much on uh, how we can support each other and what we can do for each other. The shop local, support local message, which is very much a mantra for Kilkenny Chamber of Commerce and indeed any Chamber of Commerce. We're all about supporting the local business dynamic. And um, that became very much uh, our calling card. And uh, we've seen tremendous response uh, from the wider people uh, and from businesses in that space, supporting and helping each other. Again, I suppose in relation to, you know, I love Kilkenny, as you do, and we know of its strengths and so on. But again, maybe for people outside Kilkenny, what do you think are the unique selling points that we have to offer as a city and a county for people to maybe to come to live in and to work in? Kilkenny is a wonderful place, absolutely. Um, it's a wonderful place to live in. It's a wonderful 
delightful place to work. It's a great place to come and base a business. Uh, and that isn't something that just happened by chance. Yeah. I think we're very fortunate today to be here enjoying what we have because it is the result of good decisions having been made over the past decades. Um, but never once to rest on our laurels because you can't do that. Um, you're only as good as your next deal, really. Um, so we're continually striving to go move forward and always looking for new opportunities and new ways uh, to improve whatever it is that we're doing. So Kilkenny uh, has got an awful lot going for it in the diversity that's there in terms of the many different types of businesses, the different types of people, the different types of communities that we have. Um, and it's, it's not a, a place uh, or community that relies on, you know, a single high point of the year, which is our peak season or something like that. Sure, we have peaks and troughs, but across multiple sectors, which means that it's a great place to be regardless of the time of the year. It really is, and of course we can see that true. I mean, now obviously again, during the COVID, it was so strange to see Kilkenny so quiet, but uh, we've got a, such a range of festivals now, which again is fantastic tribute to all those involved, that makes the year almost complete, that is festivals. Right, and indeed, festivals have been something that uh, Kilkenny has been renowned for for some time. Yeah. It became a big challenge, though, uh, throughout the pandemic yes. times, particularly, you know, the most restrictive times then, when uh, large gatherings were just not uh, possible to do. And um, people had to kind of uh, figure out new ways to keep these festivals alive, to keep them some way, even though they had to be parked or put aside or shrunk down in size or maybe presented differently uh, that we didn't lose them completely uh, and a lot of hard work and a lot of collaboration actually uh, went on between the likes of the business community involved in the chamber of commerce but also the local authority and um, the local enterprise office uh, the arts council and many others the heritage council all of those they were we've all been engaging together uh, to work together and try and salvage and sustain as much as we can and we've we've had great success Successes in that regard. Yeah. Uh, again, I was just thinking, obviously, that I think maybe the staycation idea g gave again a chance to many people like ourselves across Ireland to discover places like Kilkenny again, and hopefully that will last well into the future as well. Absolutely, I think that uh, that whole period has reawakened an awareness in people generally of what we have on our own doorsteps, um, and uh, that hopefully as we plan our holidays, okay, we all like go somewhere for the bit of sunshine or whatever, but hopefully people will continue to factor in uh, stay vacationing in their plans going forward as well. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. Um, no, I mean, again, uh, we just maybe speak about some of the activities that the Chamber are involved in. And I know um, one of the big areas is the Kenny Business Awards, which again, thankfully, we're back live this year. And I know it's an important event, John, for yourselves. And also, I think it recognises the contribution. Yeah. Um, the Kilkenny Business Awards has become um, a, a huge event, actually. It's one of the biggest ones in the country uh, and is a tremendous success uh, in and of itself. But when we think of, well, why? It is so important, really, not only to be successful and to do wonderful things in business, which is what's happening, but we also need to take time out and appraise and have a look at and acknowledge some tremendous successes that have been achieved. And that's what the Kilkenny Business Awards is all about. It's got to the point now where uh, it's looked forward to for months in advance uh, by people right across the business community uh, to see who's going to be up for the awards this year. We have on the night of the awards um, nearly between five and 600 people uh, in all their regalia, black tie, fancy dresses, bring out all the gunas and everything that night. Uh, and to go, it's the biggest networking event of the calendar year, um, to go and see who's in the room, um, rub shoulders with uh, the latest and greatest success stories in Kilkenny, uh, and at the same time, you know, celebrate and acknowledge some great work done by great people. For sure. And again, I suppose, in relation to um, the other activities that you're involved in, I mean, you, you do a lot of, um, I suppose, training and so on for, for colleagues. I mean, uh, there's lots of services that can advance what they're trying to do themselves in relation maybe to staff training and so on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, training and networking and supporting uh, in every way that we can think of are very significant parts of the Chamber remit. Um, in more recent years, uh, a lot of other training organisations um, and uh, avenues have opened up. Um, 
So now our role in that space is more as a conduit to help get the information out. Here are the various different things that you can do. Uh, whereas in the past, we would have had to actually organize many of those courses ourselves. Uh, so that's a great step forward as well, uh, because now the, the diversity and the huge amount of choice that's there, uh, particularly here in the southeast, and we are um, just you know happily having announced uh, the um, coming together of the SETU, the Southeast Technical University, yeah. which is a huge and important uh, entity for us all here in the Southeast region. Um, and the amount and variety of courses and that that are available uh, there are just phenomenal. And then that, of course, is all bolstered by our other organizations like the Education and Training Boards and indeed, you know, um, right throughout the local enterprise offices uh, and a range of other organizations providing uh, training and supports. So our job is very much um, one where we bring, help bring that together, help bring it to the notice and attention uh, of our members, the business community, uh, and ensure that everybody you know, makes the most of what's available. When the sun goes down in the evening light Who's like a coast to starry night When Sirius twinkles to hypnotize It's good to sit and realize This is my home life, my heart is here No matter how far I may roam I have a home land, I have a home I love her stories and the teller's gift I love the lonely piper's drift No greener fields do I need to see These simple things they comfort me This is my home My heart is here These are the voices I long to hear No matter how far I may roam I have a home land I have a home This river bench where I sit I think I'd weep for an old refrain And never doubt the pouring rain This is my homeland, my heart is here
Joining me now in Studio 10 is Selena Grace, who is the Centre Manager at the Kenny Volunteer Centre here in Kilkenny, and it's located in Irish Town. Selena, welcome to the programme. Thanks Many thanks for joining us. Thank you. Um, maybe I might start with a, with a question. What is a volunteer? So a volunteer is basically somebody who gives their time for the benefit of their community outside of, the immediate, outside of their immediate family without the expectation of pay. So basically it's someone who's doing something positive in the community without financial gain for themselves. And uh, again, I suppose, you know, there's many opportunities for people to become involved, isn't there, Selena, to become a volunteer and across many different areas. Yeah, we have a huge number of organisations registered with ourselves looking to recruit volunteers across a broad spectrum of, of organisations, of sectors, the disability sector, the youth sector, our charity shops. There's so many different organisations, so many opportunities for volunteers in Kilkenny at the moment. So perhaps for viewers who are watching tonight, maybe who have considered perhaps, you know, they've got some free time now and maybe they like, would like to help um, some different organisation. What would be the advice that you would give? Obviously, to call into yourselves, because really you're a one-stop shop, aren't you, in relation to individuals and also organisations. So that would be a good place to start. Maybe. Our centre, that's what we do. We broker matches between people who want to volunteer and local not-for-profit organisations looking for volunteers. Um, we had transition year, a bunch of transition years in with us recently, and I was describing what we do. And they're like, oh, you're sort of like Tinder for volunteers. <laughs> and I just thought that was a perfect, perfect, succinct little way of summing up what we do. That's exactly what we do. We broker matches between yeah. people who want to volunteer and, and local organisations. So if there's anybody out there that wants to volunteer, they're more than welcome to register with our service. They can register on volunteerkilkenny.ie. They can pop into us in the volunteer centre. They can speak to us on the phone. And we will have a little chat with them, talk to them about you know, their skills, their hobbies, their interests, what they feel passionate about, what, what, what's meaningful for them and why they want to volunteer and I suppose and if we know why somebody wants to volunteer we can match them or signpost them I suppose towards an organisation that will really meet both their needs and the organisation's needs that the volunteer will get something from the experience but also that the organisation will really really benefit from the involvement of that particular volunteer. And again you know as I said maybe perhaps somebody's retired and um, perhaps they've got some free time in their hands again they can bring I suppose to th th themselves so much experience perhaps into a role. Absolutely and time is probably the best thing that people can offer when you volunteer and we get a lot of people coming into us that are recently retired that have maybe found that their world is a little bit smaller as a result of retiring that they're not having that regular interaction with their work colleagues anymore and um, they're maybe a small feeling a little bit lonely or feeling a little bit disconnected volunteering is a great way to bring these people back out into the community they can meet new people they can try new things but also so so many people have such wonderful skills that maybe they don't even realize they have mm -hmm. um, and they can offer these skills and these experiences to organizations and do something really really positive and really good in the community and to learn new skills themselves because we're always learning aren't we or we should be always learning and volunteering is a big progression for people you know we find that that people will start volunteering and when you're volunteering you are obviously you're always learning new things you're learning leadership skills you're learning communication skills you're learning teamwork skills you're learning so much through volunteering that you wouldn't have access to unless you were volunteering so it's a wonderful way to progress yourself and progress your own expertise and your knowledge and your your values i suppose through volunteering and I guess there's no age limit, is there? I mean oh no, absolutely not. Anybody can volunteer. We're very, very firm in Kilkenny Volunteer Centre that it's open to anybody, no matter what their age, their nationality, their experience, whatever background they have, whatever time they have to offer, there's a volunteering role out there for absolutely everybody. And of course now it's great, Selene, as well, as we've come coming through COVID-19 and, you know, that we can actually get back together again. I'm sure for, like, like yourselves, it must be great to uh, see that situation arising now where people can actually go out and volunteer. We're, I suppose we're, we're being flooded with local organisations really? that are yeah. reopening their services. Yeah. Yeah. We launched last year during, I suppose, the, the height of the COVID pandemic. Mm -hmm. And it was a challenging time to, to start a new service because, you know, so many community activities were on pause due to social distancing restrictions. Um, so we worked, I suppose, we were a little bit creative and a bit innovative around volunteering last year. And we looked at developing volunteering from home roles mm -hmm. with a lot of organisations. However, in the last probably you know, year and a half, especially since 2022, with the reopening of society, we have been inundated. We, we have a huge influx of organisations, community groups coming into us, restarting their activities after, you know, the two year hiatus, crying out for volunteers. And we're doing our best, I suppose, to facilitate new new engagement for, for these organisations. Excellent. I suppose, again, a lot of people globally have reflected during the two years, haven't they? And maybe they want to change their life a bit or maybe want to do something different or give back to, for example, the community, which again, 
it's what volunteering offers, isn't it? Absolutely, and I suppose, look, volunteering has even changed. Over COVID, yeah. volunteering has evolved and it's changed right. too. Um, before, it, there was a lot of kind of regular, role, what we call role-based volunteering. So people who would sign up to do two hours a week for 48 weeks of the year doing particular roles. Yeah. Whereas now, I suppose, and with COVID, people have re-evaluated their their options, time commitments, their their you know their commitments in their personal lives, and people want to do short, little, snappy pieces of volunteering. They want to do volunteering that sort of dip in and out around their around their time schedules. So we're working with organisations to sort of maybe move a little bit with the times and look at is there ways, new ways that we can involve volunteers in our groups and still still meet our objectives, still get our work done, but be a little bit creative or be a little bit innovative. So look, for example. Does an admin volunteer necessarily need to be sitting in an office during yes. office hours? Is it something that someone could do at home yes. in the comfort of their own living room on a Saturday night when they have a few hours to spare? Could they do a little bit of, of filing there or a little bit of admin work, virtual admin work? Exactly. And is that, you know, uh, I think that would be the new way forward. I think we need to be creative now. As Blended approach. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, you know, there's no blanket approach to volunteering now anymore. It is looking at the, the new the new needs within the community and the new needs the volunteers are bringing that they want the flexible volunteering opportunities. And just as you spoke there, actually, I suppose, again, maybe, you know, over maybe a period of years, people could do different volunteering work. I mean, obviously, not just maybe stay in the same area. And again, that's, that's great for themselves too, isn't it? To learn yeah. more skills and... And that's what our service, I think, is really, really good yeah. at, that we don't just do the once-off yes. support with a volunteer. A volunteer can come in and out of us as often as they want. They come in and out of our office as often as they want. Um, very often we'll have somebody that will, will start in a particular role and maybe after a couple of months might decide that they want to do you know, something a bit different. So just yeah. to give you an example, we had a gentleman, a volunteer recently from Spain, who had arrived in Ireland, had very, very limited English, and um, wanted to volunteer both to improve his English and, and to make new friends. Um, so he, we got him set up in a local charity shop uh, where he could improve his English and where he could you know, meet people in the community. Um, after a couple of months, he felt that his English was, was improved, it was better, um, and he came back in and he said, look, I'm ready now to try something new. Um, I want to do something more in line with my experience, with my skills, and we matched him with another organisation. So we're, we're very much about providing ongoing support to volunteers. You know, we're not a one-stop, a, one, yeah. a once-off sort of a service. We, we'll provide that ongoing support for people. Isn't that wonderful? And again, I suppose, you know, perhaps even people who are unemployed, I mean, again, it's an opportunity maybe to, to, you know, to learn some new skills and also maybe to get experience in some areas too. That's another area perhaps where... Yeah, volunteering is fabulous for work experience. Yeah. I mean, again, we do have a, lar a large number of people who do come to us looking for work experience. So if people want to, you know, get involved in a new industry, if, if they're maybe sick of their current job and they want to try something new, volunteering is a way of dipping your toe in the water uh, and seeing if you like something before taking the plunge. It's a great way for people who are maybe in between, in between jobs at the moment to fill gaps in their CV and to show, I suppose, to show future employers that you have a little bit of get up and go in you and that you're, you know, you're not languishing while you're, while you're not working, that you're using your time and you're using your, I suppose, this, this free time that you have to the benefit of the community. It's showing a bit of, I suppose, initiative as well. Yeah, and it's getting people out and meeting people and making connections. And that's really what's so important. And that's what volunteering is all about. It's about yeah. meeting people. It's about making the connections, making the connections in your community and, you know, building your connections and, and feeling that you're part of the community. So building the sense of belonging in the community. And as we speak, uh, it's National Volunteering Week. Lots of activities going on in Ireland, but also in Kilkenny, which you're involved in. Yeah. And, and uh, that's going very well. It is, yes. Yeah. So National Volunteering Week is a week-long celebration of volunteering. Um, so it's all about, it's a whole week-long programme of events celebrating and recognising the contributions that, that volunteers make up and down the country in our towns, villages, cities, in our communities. Uh, so in Kilkenny, firstly, we were encouraging all of our local organisations that are registered with us to do something small for their volunteers this week, whether it's a coffee morning, whether it's a talk, a thank you event, or even just a little thank you card, something really, really simple to let the volunteers know that they're appreciated and valued in that organisation. In the Volunteer Centre, we have a programme of events running throughout the week. So we had a climate action workshop. We had a volunteer leaders coffee morning for, for people who lead and facilitate volunteers. We have information stands at, at different events throughout the week. We're throwing open our Volunteer Centre on, on Saturday and welcoming in anybody who is interested in, in getting involved in volunteering and who wants to hear a little bit more about the organisations and the community groups out, out there in County Kilkenny currently looking for volunteers. Um, so that's sort of our big our big event as part of Vol National Volunteer Week this year. 
Well, there's so much great work going on, Celine, and uh, well done to you and your colleagues. Um, and again, I, I was looking at your website again, so there's lots of information available. And um, you would encourage maybe people who are maybe even just thinking about it, look at the website, maybe call into yourselves in Irish Town. Absolutely. There's no expectation of commitment. I suppose that's really, really important yeah. to say that we're a very, very person centred service that the person that we're dealing with, the volunteer standing in front of us, you are in control as a volunteer when we're working around you. So if you come into our centre, if you register on our website, we don't expect you to volunteer. It's, it's your choice. So you're coming to us for the information. We will give you the information and then it's up to you then to make an informed decision about what you would like to do. So you are always in control. And whether you have two hours, whether you have 20 hours, whether you decide after, after meeting with us, okay, look, volunteering isn't for me right now, but I might consider it in the future, that's 100% fine. We're, we're very person-centred. And, and you're in control as the volunteer. Well, Selena Grace, Centre Manager for the Volunteer Centre here in Kenny, thank you for coming into the studio today to talk to us and um, best of luck with your work. Thank you, Frank. Many thanks to Selena Grace from Kenny Volunteer Centre for joining us on today's programme. Now, my next guest is the Ambassador of Morocco who visited the Twilight Conference here in Kilkenny earlier in the year. We spoke for Studio 10 at the New Park Hotel here in Kilkenny. I'm delighted to be here at the Twilight International Conference being held at New Park Hotel today here in Kilkenny. And uh, many different guests appearing obviously on the agenda, but also joining us today is the Moroccan ambassador who I've gone to have a chat with now. Sir, maybe you might just introduce yourself for our listeners and viewers here. Yeah, I'm uh, actually the Moroccan ambassador. My name is Lassan Mahrawi and uh, I have been here for five years now. So I know Kilkenny very well and uh, I have been here many times. And uh, yeah, we are here, delighted to be here today because it's uh, one of our actions to have this kind of diplomacy, people to people. So that's the reason of Twilight and I'm very, very happy to be here today. It's so nice to meet you and many thanks for sharing your time with us today. Um, as I was saying to you maybe before we had a chat for, for the cameras, it's such an important day really, isn't it, for many, many reasons. First of all, obviously, to be back as groups again, being able to meet after what's been a very difficult two years. Yeah, the, the, the two years uh, was very difficult for everyone, uh, actually. So thanks God we are still alive and I think that uh, we are uh, uh, completely back on the rack, not on track right now. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, so life uh, is uh, ongoing right now and uh, we have the chance to be still alive and to meet all once again. And, and then think about communities, uh, uh, think about what is positive and what we can do. So uh, this is why I'm, I'm here today and I will never, never miss this kind of meetings of Twilight. Because yeah, uh, since the beginning I have been here, I learned a lot. And uh, as, uh, as uh, I said, uh, I, I heard this morning, the Twilight is all about integration, about uh, actually uh, being together, thinking together, and build them together. So yeah, it's a good reason to be here today in, in Kalkinay. That's fantastic. And it's really, it's, it's, Twilight is all about community. Mm -hmm. And today is really all about community as well as, as, you know, from a European perspective, from a national perspective, it's fantastic. And again, I suppose maybe just from your own view, having been here now for a number of years, how, how, how have you found Ireland? Uh, actually, are we progressing well? No, you are progressing well. But I'm very lucky actually to be in Ireland. Yes. Because yeah, people are all the time complaining about weather that they are bright, so it's okay. So it's not a problem at all. And uh, the reason, as I told to, to many friends of, of mine here in Ireland, that the reason of my presence in Ireland and my own goal is just having friends and building bridges. So with Twilight today and Kelkenny, we are also in position to build many bridges. So uh, coming to this conference, is also a uh, mean for me to meet the mayor of Kilkenny and to build on what we have already done. So we spoke this morning about how to extend the collaboration that we have between Tiznit and Kilkenny to many other fields. So I brought with me today a kind of convention that could be signed with with another school here in Kilkenny. It's, it, it's this convention that could be, could be a kind of a new bridge that we can build between school to school. It's my way to sustain this kind of relationship. So I'm, I'm, not, I'm not here forever, but it's very important to leave a kind of very, yeah. very positive footprint behind me. And I think that the future is kids of today. And having these kids discussing together, talking together, playing together, exchanging together, is our, my way 
of to making this kind of relationship sustained. So we, uh, I met also the, the, the president of the Chamber of Commerce. So trade is a backbone of any relationship. Yes. It's very important also to extend to this, the, the, this aspect. Uh, sport, and I think that Kilkenny will uh, next year participate in a tournament in Agadir. Yes. So there are, there are many aspects and there are many uh, objectives that we, we would like to share together and, and to reach together. And I think that we are on the right way to, to, to do so. Mr. Ambassador, that's a wonderful idea. And again, it's um, it's about looking into the future, which again, obviously, is so important. And again, you know, Ireland's relationship with Morocco is growing also because we've opened our embassy there now as well, which is really exciting, isn't it? And uh, great, greater connectivity. Exactly. So with the island, I'm very a big achievement actually, thanks to 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 to, to the work we we we've done with our friends here in Ireland. Uh, as I used to say before the opening of the embassy, we cannot clap with one hand. So now we have two hands. And I'm very, very, very pleased to, to work hand in hand with my colleague, uh, James McIntyre, who is in the ambassador or in, in Morocco. He's very happy to be there. And they think that, yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's a good year for us uh, to see this uh, relation growing. And it's not only in diplomacy, it's also in culture. It's also in sport. It's again in, 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 in the, 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 the parliament diplomacy. The Kankola visited Morocco a few years ago, the Kihalik as well. The Speaker of Morocco visited Ireland two years ago and it was the first time in history. So there are a lot of things that we are doing and they think that Morocco is not that far and we have a lot of similarities between the two countries and there is also a lot of complementarity in terms of business and we need just to meet, to task us and to create projects together. Excellent, excellent. And again, I suppose the opportunity to go to Morocco is increasing too because we've got increased flight uh, possibilities now as well. And uh, you mentioned the weather. We, we love our weather here, but sometimes it's nice maybe to get a week or something of kind of guaranteed sunshine. So Morocco is a beautiful place to go. Yeah, actually, it's one also of the point that I discussed with, with, with I, did, I, I had to discuss with, with, with Merti uh, when he visited me uh, lately in, in the embassy, is how to bring the senior people from Kilkenny to Disney in winter. Wow. It's a way of, for them to just to be open to a new culture, yes. new civilization, yes. and also new uh, cuisine to share with people what we have in common and what we have in difference, and just to start knowing each other and doing things to, all together. Tourism is one of the keys. Ireland is a, a, a touristic country. Morocco is a touristic country as well. And uh, we have now two flights, direct flights, one to Marrakesh and the second one to Agadir. And I think that we are also working because Morocco is also uh, a land of Gulf and island as well. But yet yeah, only the difference that we have 365 years of sound. So people, if they cannot play golf here, they can play it there. So it, and the, the, the flight, they take just three hours. Yes. It's like going from Dublin to Galway. So Morocco is not that far. Listen, I want, and, to, I want, and, I want to go after what you said there now. I'm definitely going to go right myself. But uh, <laughs> um, it's yeah, and of course, as you know, obviously from from your conversations with Marty and so on, tourism is such an important part of Kilkenny as well. Yeah. And uh, that's a wonderful again opportunity, perhaps, so we can grow and uh, develop uh, new connections. Um, speaking about sports, um, have you had a chance to see our national games here? Of in course, hurling? of course. And yeah. I, I was invited by one of the county around here. I was actually in Wexford, and uh, I was uh, I was very pleased to be invited to to uh, um, a kind of match between Kilkenny and and and, and Wexford. So it uh, it was two or three years ago, Good. and it was a lovely one, and yeah. I, I enjoyed actually the ambience and, yeah. and the, the 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 way to the play, etc., etc. And they think that when talking about 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 culture, it's very important, maybe also to see the culture of Irish going to Morocco to be shared with people. You have a lot of things to share with us. So, yeah. And again, I suppose, you know, your role as ambassador, I mean, in general, the role of ambassador is it's obviously so important, but um, I suppose it's all about creating new relationships, deepening bonds. Um, would that be your view as well and in relation to your role? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's what I said, actually. I'm, my, my own, I'm, I'm trying, I'm a kind of ambassador who is thinking out of the box. And what matters to me is a kind of how to create friendship. Yes. First of all, for myself, because when you have friends, 
it's what matters in life. Yes. And when you have friends, it's for life. It's not only for when you are there posting. So that's that's actually my hope in, in this. And also building these bridges. So and I think that since I arrived here, we have built built a lot of bridges in terms of uh, education uh, because yeah, we signed many many agreements between universities. So now we have an agreement between Trinity College and Mohammed V University in Rabat and University International Rabat. We have Galway Agadir, and uh, by the end of this month, I will go to Galway because there are 25 professor and student going to Agadir, and this relationship is very, very important and very intense, and they have worked already together, and they have uh, actually reached many results that they published in international actually journals and so on. And we have also DCU and Marrakesh. We have the School of Architecture of Lambrick with Marrakesh as well. We have this big school in Dalwiri on the design and so on with another one in Morocco. So we are trying and having this uh, actually background of academic and they know what the academy can, can mean. So we have also bridges in sport, in, 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 in culture, and we are planning to do a very, uh, very big event at Christchurch uh, in, in the, the month of, of, of June, on the, yeah, the date is the 30, 23rd of June, in which we can bring actually two bands for Sufi music. Beautiful. that we will share with our, our, our friends in, 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 in Christchurch and around. And then um, I'm also working on the interfaith and how to work together and to share what is positive in, 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 in both countries and what you can share with others. Mr. So Ambassador, it's been wonderful talking to you. It's been wonderful learning about your country, Morocco, and the growing connections that we are going to have between Ireland and Morocco. Many thanks for your time today. So thank you very much for having me today. And, uh, uh, I'm, I'm looking forward to do more and more and more and I think that Kilkenny could be have this lead in the region and uh, and uh, they think that they, in, the, in the next year year we, we can we can reach more and more and more results. So once again, thank you very much for having me today. My pleasure. Thank you. So that brings us to the end of today's programme. Thanks to all our guests and our team behind the cameras here at Studio 10 from the Twilight Community Group Broadcast Studio. Thanks to you for watching. And do tell your family and friends about us. From me, Frank Tynan, until the next programme, do take care. Bye-bye.